I am not a number on a page. I am not a casualty of war. I am not a Sunday project. Or an opportunity for you to feel good. I'm not a development goal. A mission trip. A Facebook status. A gold coin donation. Or a quick minute of your time. My name is Priyap Thi. I'm married with three children. And although we will never meet, we are connected. Not too long ago, my life was very difficult. We had to depend on the rice fields alone for our livelihood. When the field would do poorly, we had to borrow money from a private lender to survive. Their interest rates are very high, and it made life very challenging. When I was younger, it was never as dry as it is now. Today, there is very little rain, and it made the season less predictable. It makes it harder to farm. To try and increase yields, many people import seed and fertilizers. My family would often become sick from this food, especially my husband. One day, a program leader from PNKS invited us to attend the Village Development Association. We wanted to learn about hygiene and growing our own vegetables to improve our health and livelihood, so we decided to join. Since joining the VDA, there has been significant change in our life. I learned how to care better for our health and how to make better use of my land. We now have fish pond, chickens, pigs, a vegetable garden, and can collect our own seed for planting next season. We also learned about the harmful health effects caused by the pesticides and the damage they can cause to our land. The VDA has taught us how to produce our own fertilizers naturally, which not only saves us money, but it healthier. We are not only have enough food for ourselves, but I now sell my vegetables at the local marketplace. They are very popular. People are tired of vegetables that are filled with harmful chemicals. It's exciting to see the change in our community. Others, like me, are also learning how to improve their livelihood. My name is Josaran, and this is my wife, Um Kung. Before we joined the VDA, life had many hardships. I lost my leg from a landmine left over from the war and have only a small farm to manage. Because of my injury, earning a livelihood is very difficult. It is also hard to connect with people in my community. After joining the VDA, we learn how to make better use of our land through the vertical garden. We were also able to create a fish pound and to ride chicken to have a livelihood. My neighbors are very interested in the skill I have learned and now visit me regularly. I am less lonely as a result and don't feel as hindered by my disability. There are many others like us in our community that are learning to make a better life for themselves thanks to the techniques we are learning. Things are improving for us, yet we still have a long way to go. There are still a lot of people using harmful chemicals and costly farming practices that are poor and need help. My dream is to be able to have a larger farm so that my daughters can work the land with my husband and I. Like many families here, they currently work in the clothing factories. It's hard work. They do not have safe working condition. She is often sick from the poor food they provide and tired from the long hours. My hope for tomorrow is to see my community happy and healthy. One of the main reasons I joined VDA was because of the importance they have in sharing, loving and caring for others. As we are learning more and more, everything is connected from the land and the way we care for it, to the ocean and to the sky. We each play a part in caring for our planet and each other. My name is Pip T, and although we will never meet, we are connected.
well, we've had Donna go to Zambia and we've had Joy and Ted go to Papua New Guinea and we've had Rhett and Leah and Grace and Riley and Travis go to Mindat in Burma. Now, Margaret is off to Cambodia. So I'm just going to ask Margaret to share a little bit about that. So Margaret, thanks for coming up here. Why are you going to Cambodia? Good morning, everyone. Some months back, a group of people, mainly from Victoria, were invited to join a deep trip with Tier Australia to Cambodia. DEEP stands for Development Education Exposure Program. I've been a supporter of Tier Australia for many years and have appreciation of their community development model, of working to address poverty as well as the issues that poverty causes, like child trafficking. I was invited to join a group of people who are going to visit projects in Cambodia in January. I applied and was accepted. So, Margaret, what has motivated you to go on this trip? I'm really interested in development work. I worked in community development here in Bright before I retired. So this gives me a chance to see development work done in another part of the world. TIER doesn't actually go and do the work. They partner with local churches and Christian organisations in places like Cambodia. They plan a project with aims, timelines and projected outcomes and submit the project to TIER for funding approval. In that way, Every project is tailored to the needs and aspirations of the local population. TIA provides oversight and support to the program team, but the work in the village or town is the responsibility of the local organisation. When you get there, Margaret, what do you expect to encounter? Well, that's a bit of an unknown. Realistically, sustainability takes time, but as we saw in the video, I expect to see improved lives, personal growth, healthier people who have a better understanding of their place in the community, and above all, a greater hope for the future. On a personal level, I expect to find it hot and our living conditions will be basic. There'll be no five-star hotels with swimming pools for our group. Question without notice. How do you think your walk on the Camino Way has prepared you for this next step, which in our conversation is certainly out of your comfort zone? Well... Possibly in a couple of the places we'll be sleeping in dormitory-style accommodation, uh, which is something that happens all the time on the Camino. Uh, and, of course, on the Camino, you never know what to expect around the next corner, and I think that will be fairly similar too. But also another comparison, I think, with the Camino is you're walking with a whole lot of other people and, yeah, you're all on the same wavelength, so... From that point of view, it, it can be very good. What do you think you'll learn while you're in Cambodia? Already as a group, our training for the trip has been considerable. We've been working through a series of Bible studies on poverty and development. I have shared the first study with our home group and it was very thought-provoking. As well, we've had to complete an online child safe course that took me a couple of hours to do. Also, we've met twice by Zoom and once in person. We've signed various indemnity forms, we've signed a code of conduct and we've been given a book to read which is titled When Helping Hurts. I think I'm up to chapter four. So even before Australia, we've been equipped and aware and sensitised 
to our responsibility to respect the people with whom we have contact. I've read accounts of T's work over the years, so I know the two-dimensional picture. By going and seeing for myself, I hope to have a more nuanced understanding and I'll hear firsthand their stories of transformation and empowerment. Another question without notice. How do you personally um, deal with Cambodia's very checkered past? We're aware of the war and the violence of recent times, not in the too distant past. How, how have you thought about that? Well, actually, at first, when we, when we get there, um, there is a, a day of remembrance for the Pol Pot regime. It's a public holiday, and as a group, we'll be going to the museum there, which I'm sure will be very confronting. But we also do have an in-country orientation uh, program happening on the first three days and we also do a bit of language learning as well. Um, I'm, I've been a supporter of another organisation in Cambodia and uh, walking through some of the experiences that they've had in setting up a pregnancy crisis counselling service for single women in Phnom Penh. Uh, I understand some of the issues around the present dictatorship that they've got there that's called the democracy. Does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That will be challenging. And we'll yes. be praying for you. Thank you. How is this Cambodia trip being funded? Each group member has to pay their own airfare and full costs of transport, food and lodging. I have already paid my costs in full. However, the tier have heaped another challenge on us and asked us each to fundraise for the projects in Cambodia. So if any of you would like to contribute, there are a few ways that you can. As you can see on the screen, I'm afraid the writing's not very big. Every donation is an expression of your support for me on this journey and also a contribution to a more just and compassionate world. So in ways to con donate, you can donate online on my Facebook page if you are linked with me. Just uh, go to that page and click on the link or you can do, do an online after the service. I'll have my phone and my computer all linked up together and uh, you can make a donation that way, straight after the service. Or if you're not into computers, cash or cheque to me and everything will be receipted. Or by purchasing a useful gift from the useful gift shop. I've got catalogues here today and my email address here. Uh, you can order them and I'll bring your order to you next week. Um, after the service. Finally, Pilates fundraiser before Christmas with my daughter Anne Hooperman. If you see her Mountain Pilates social media page, you can uh, get, pick up the details from that. And as I said, all donations will be receipted and the donations are tax deductible. Um, Do I ask you another question now? Um, whilst I'm away, <laughs> <laughs> I hope to be able to send back some news and photos uh, to keep you posted. So what do you want to get out of this trip personally? What are your expectations and what would you like to come back with? Well, firstly, a deeper understanding of the challenges and issues, the trials and the setbacks of development work doesn't all go to plan. Also a deeper appreciation of the efforts that people make to improve their lives. I expect to be challenged to be more supportive of sustainable development. I expect to find myself outside my comfort zone well and truly and in fact 
the leaders have asked us to think about how we're going to look after our mental health if we find ourselves being challenged in that way. Sometimes we, we talk about things a lot and um, nothing much changes, but how do you think this trip will make a difference? I think all of the team members will gain a deeper insight into the development projects at the grassroots level and in turn communicate with others about the work that they see. In our home group, from the study that we did, we gained an appreciation of both the causes of poverty and the compounding effects of it, and there is no quick fix. Then we will learn from the villagers themselves. I expect that their pride in their achievements and their confidence will likely make a lasting impression. Well, we're going to ask you about what you'd like us to pray about, but also is there anything else you want to add? My interest in Tears' work stems from my desire for justice in the world. When I was a young girl, I experienced gender injustice, both at home and at school. It was very common. Others of you can probably relate to that too, girls. Even at church, there seemed to be a double standard about what boys and girls should and shouldn't do. That was quite a negative impact of justice issues. But often in life, unpleasant events can alert us to the tough situations in the lives of other people. On the positive side, at the church that I attended, every Sunday we would pray for the widow, the fatherless, the unemployed and the outcast, so that a sensitivity to the needs of others was developed. And finally, the scriptures contain over 2,000 references to justice and poverty issues, making it very clear that as Christians, issues of poverty and justice are our responsibility to address in Jesus' name. As Amos the prophet said, let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. Which we sort of sung at the start of the service. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In one form and fashion of that text. So we're going to ask you now for what you'd like us to pray for. We're all going to listen carefully and then we're going to pray for you. Um, it's it's great that here's an example of moving out of your comfort zone. Rep was talking about that recently. I've talked to about that as well. And it's also proof that God is working, that God's spirit is moving, is on the move, inspiring us, challenging us to do things in partnership with him in the world. What would you like us to pray for? Well, personally, first of all, that I'll be able to cope outside my comfort zone. Secondly, that the team will bond well. It's quite an age range in the team of 11 of us. And that the work of TIERS project partners will continue to bring sustainable transformation in the lives of people in developing countries. Fortunately, we've got these right in front of us. Yeah. Um, Linda, would you like to come up and pray for Margaret? Would that be OK? And Adam, could you as well please just join us here and we'll pray for Margaret. We thank you, loving God, that Margaret has heard your call, has experienced you in her life and is interested in people in this country of Cambodia who need a hand, who need to know more of your love and need certain skills and practices that will help them grow in their lives and develop as a community. So we thank you for Margaret. We thank you that she's going. We pray for her protection. We pray that she'll cope with 
each of the challenges that she's talked about today. Outside her comfort zone, we pray that she'll know that you are with her every step of the way. We pray that there'll be great solidarity and community around Margaret in the group that she's going in and that she's received well and enthusiastically gains new insights and can rejoice in the people that she gets to know. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for, for Margaret. Lord, we thank you that she's heard your call on her life. Lord, we just pray that you would go before her. Open the doors, Lord. Lord, open her mind to, um, and her heart even more to the things that you want her to say in your name. But the love that she has for you would be expressed to others through this practical ministry of, um, of uh, sustainability and uh, health and all of those things that go with that. Lord, we just thank you that, um, that Margaret um, would be safe. Lord, that your Holy Spirit would continually surround her and keep her safe. Lord, that in her mind that she would go to you when things are tough. Lord, that you would um, give her uh, ways to deal with things that are confronting. Lord, that at all times that she would uh, rely upon you and that you would keep her safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah, Lord, what an inspiration Margaret is today. Our Father, in a season of life where It'd be easy just to wind down and to relax and to enjoy the fruits of a, of a, of a life through work and live, lived well. And, but no, Father, she's not comfortable to sit in that zone that she calls the comfort zone. Uh, Lord, and we thank you that you do call us out of that space because it's in that space, Lord, that we know we find you uh, more acutely uh, as we press into you and know that we cannot do things on our own strength and our own abilities. Uh, so, Father, I pray for, for her and her team that as they are stretched and as they are pulled and pushed and confronted with things that challenge, I guess, their sentiment yeah. and their different beliefs and different uh, values of the world, that they will see you clearly in it all, uh, see your heart for people and be motivated out of that to just care and to love. And as that lady on the video said, just be connected with other humans across this world who we may never see, we may never interact with, but at the core of who we are, we are created and loved by you. And that connects us in a mighty powerful way. Uh, so, Father, I just pray for Cambodia as a country. Uh, I thank you they don't like to live in the shadow of Pol Pot's regime, that they are actually redefining themselves and moving out of that. And that is a, a testimony to us all, that we don't live in the past. We're not chained by the things that define us previously but we are new creations and we are people who can move forward together and I just thank you for this step of faith that Margaret is exhibiting and just pray that you'll bless her in a mighty way. Amen. So I'm sure Margaret will take questions later um, around donations and around um, a cuppa. So um, let's give Margaret a send-off even though she's not going till January. (laughs)